A woodpecker is a bird. It is red, white, and black. It has a long, sharp beak. This is a special beak. It is stronger than a tree trunk. The woodpecker makes holes in tree trunks. It hits the tree trunk with its sharp beak again and again. Peck, peck, peck. Peck, peck, peck. It makes a hole in the tree trunk. Then it makes the hole bigger. It makes the hole big enough to sit in. It makes the hole big enough for two birds to sit in. It makes a nest in the hole. It prepares the nest for two baby birds. The mama woodpecker lays two eggs in the nest. She sits on the eggs. Papa Woodpecker brings her food. The eggs hatch. Then Mama and Papa feed the babies. The babies grow up and fly away. Then they find other trees. They make holes in other trees for new baby birds. They make new holes in different trees. Peck, peck, peck. Peck, peck, peck. Why don't the woodpeckers get headaches? They hit their beaks against a tree trunk all day long. But you never see a woodpecker take aspirin. They must have very hard beaks. They must have very hard heads. Los Angeles is a big city. There are millions of people here. But thousands of people have no home. They are homeless people. They live on the sidewalks. They sleep on the sidewalks. They are called street people. They don't have cars. They have shopping carts. They fill the carts with their belongings. They put their extra clothes into the carts. They put their blankets into the carts. Many homeless people live downtown. They live near the newspaper building. They live near the courthouse. They live near fancy condos. They have no money. They sit on the sidewalk all day. People walk by them. They ask people for money. People say they don't have any money. There are missions downtown. These missions feed homeless people. They give them free lunches. They feed them every day. Some missions have beds. Homeless people sleep in these beds. But there are more homeless people than beds. There are not enough beds for the homeless people. So, most homeless people sleep on the sidewalk. They sleep next to their shopping carts. She was new in town. The town was near the ocean. She wanted to visit the beach. She had a new friend. She asked her new friend to take her to the beach. Her friend said, okay. They went to the beach. It was a hot, sunny day. The beach was crowded. They put a big towel on the sand. They walked down to the water. They stepped into the water. They got their feet wet. They went back to their towel. They sat on the towel. 
They looked at the boats and surfers. They looked at the seagulls. They saw some dolphins. A lifeguard walked by. He said hello. He talked to them for a minute. They stayed at the beach all afternoon. They talked with each other. They watched many people having fun. They watched the sun go down. It was huge and orange. It sank into the ocean. They shook the sand out of the towel. They folded the towel and walked back to the car. That was wonderful, she told her friend. I like the beach. Thank you for taking me to the beach today. I love my mom. She took care of me when I was very young. She took care of me when I was sick. She taught me how to read. She taught me how to get dressed. She taught me how to button my shirt. She taught me how to tie my shoes. She taught me how to brush my teeth. She taught me to be kind to others. She taught me to tell the truth. She taught me to be polite. She took me to school on my first day of school. She held my hand. She helped me with my homework. She was nice to all my friends. She always cheered me up. Next year, I will graduate from high school. I will go to college. I will do well in college. I will do well after college. My mom has taught me well. He is looking at the calendar. Today is January 30th. It is Friday. Tomorrow will be Saturday. Tomorrow will be the last day of the month. Sunday will be the first day of next month. Sunday will be the first day of February. He must pay his rent on the first day. He will write a check tonight. He will take the check to his landlord on Sunday. The landlord will be happy to get the check on time. The landlord will be angry if the check is late. The landlord will kick him out if the check is late. He doesn't care why a check is late. Late is late. The landlord does not accept excuses. No excuse will please the landlord. All excuses are bad excuses. A late check is like bad news. Nobody likes bad news. The landlord will tell him, Goodbye. Go find another apartment. Have a nice life in your new apartment. You can't live here anymore. Your check was late. She went to the casino. A casino is a gambling house. People gamble in a casino. They take a chance with their money. They hope they will win. Sometimes they do, but usually they lose. It was her birthday. She took $100 to the casino. She went to the change booth. She got change for her money. 
she got 400 quarters for her $100. The quarters were in paper rolls. 40 quarters were in each roll. She put the rolls into a plastic bucket. She carried the bucket over to a slot machine. She loved slot machines. She opened a roll of quarters. She put a quarter in the machine. She pulled down on the handle. She looked at the screen. Give me three cherries, she thought, or give me three bananas, or give me three apples. Three of anything is a winner. Two cherries, or one cherry, is a loser. She played for several hours. Sometimes she won. She felt good when she won, but usually she lost. Finally, she lost all her quarters. She went home. She spent $100, but she had fun. I will play again on my next birthday, she thought. We do not live in a black and white world. We live in a rainbow world. Colors are everywhere. Colors are beautiful. A toilet bowl is white. A panda is white and black. A crow is black. The sky and the ocean are blue. An apple is red or green. An orange is always orange. But the sun is sometimes orange. A stoplight is red, yellow, and green. A lemon is yellow. People are white, brown, or black. Fishes and birds are many different colors. Hair is white, gray, brown, black, or red. A golf ball and a baseball are white. A basketball is orange. A tennis ball is green. A fire engine is red. A police car is black and white. The moon and the stars are white. Grass is green, but dirt is brown. A fried egg is yellow and white. Your blood is red. Your teeth are white. A stop sign is red and white. You cannot talk about colors to blind people. They have never seen colors. That is sad. Different shapes and forms are everywhere. Boxes and street signs are square or rectangular. Balls and wheels are round. The sun and moon are round. Wedding rings are round. Eggs and light bulbs are almost round. Pyramids and arrow tips are triangular. Tables and books are square or rectangular. Doors and refrigerators are rectangular. A stop sign has eight sides. A triangle has three sides. Pencils and pens are long and round. Your toes are short and round. Many things have various shapes. 
humans and animals have various shapes. Faces have various shapes. Clouds have various shapes. Houses and buildings have various shapes. Airplanes have various shapes. Other things have weird shapes. Bicycles and tricycles have weird shapes. Countries have weird shapes. Tools and machines have weird shapes. Shapes can be beautiful too. Boys think that a skateboard or a soccer ball has a beautiful shape. Men think that women have the most beautiful shape of all. Why do people do stupid things? Some people try to walk across freeways. They get run over. Some people stand on the edge of cliffs. They slip and fall to their death. Some people think a gun is not loaded. They point the gun at a friend. They pull the trigger. They kill their friend. Some people want to watch a storm up close. They go to the ocean. They feel the wind. They see the big waves. They are excited. Then a big wave takes them out to sea. They drown. Many people drop out of school. They say that school is boring. They want to have fun. School is not fun. They hate homework. They get a job at McDonald's. All day long, they ask the customers, do you want fries with that? Is that fun? No, but it is stupid. Some people cheat on their wives or husbands. They get caught. Their marriage ends. They are alone. Many people smoke cigarettes. They get cancer. Many people drink and drive. Drinking and driving is against the law. It's dangerous. It's stupid, but people do it every day. Mama Cat had six new kittens. Three kittens were black and two were white. One kitten was black with white feet and a white face. Nancy asked, Mom, can we keep all the kittens? Her mom said no. We can't afford to keep six kittens, she said. When the kittens are three months old, we will give them away. Nancy asked if she could keep one kitten. Her mom said okay. Nancy decided to keep the kitten with white feet. She called him Boots. When the other five kittens were three months old, Nancy's mom took pictures of them. Nancy took the pictures to school. She showed the pictures to her friends. All her friends wanted a kitten. They came to her house the next day. They took all the kittens except Boots. Boots is my kitten, Nancy told her friends. Then her mom said, we have to take Mama Cat to the cat doctor. Nancy asked why. We have to fix her, her mom said. We don't want her to have more kittens. The doctor will fix her. I love my girlfriend. She is sweet and kind. 
She makes me laugh. She loves me. We have fun together. We go to movies and to restaurants. We go to the beach to swim. We go to the park for picnics. We watch TV together. We go to church together. We take long walks together. We read books, magazines, and newspapers. We talk about many things. We agree on many things, but we also disagree on some things. Sometimes we argue about things. I think she likes to argue. She thinks I like to argue. We argue about silly things. Yesterday we argued about a window. She wanted the window open. I wanted it closed. We talk about the weather and the government. We talk about our families. She is a good tennis player. Sometimes she beats me. We play chess and Scrabble. Scrabble is a fun game about words. You need a good vocabulary to win. I usually beat her at chess, but she usually beats me at Scrabble. I guess my vocabulary is not so good. We will get married in a couple of years. We want to spend the rest of our life together. We will start a family. We want to have two children, one boy and one girl. We will be so happy. Americans are getting fat. A new study says that most Americans are too fat. Is that true? Look at the people around you. Are most of them fat? Are most of them thin? Or are most of them in between? Many fat people get sick. They die young. Doctors say these people can live longer. They must eat more fruits and vegetables. They must eat less meat. They must eat more fish. They must eat less fried food. They must not eat at fast food restaurants. No more cheeseburgers and no more french fries. They must eat less bread and less pasta. If they eat less, they will weigh less. But Americans must also exercise. They must walk more. They don't have to run or jog. They don't have to climb stairs. All they have to do is walk. Just walk 30 minutes a day. Is that hard to do? Eat less, walk more, live longer. It sounds easy, but people love to eat. Eating is fun. Food is delicious. So it's not easy to eat less. Try to do it. It's hard to do. Daddy, let's order a pizza, Billy said. That sounds like a good idea, said his dad. They looked at a menu they had at home. What kind do you want, his dad asked. Billy wanted a large pizza. He wanted a pizza with four toppings. He wanted cheese, pepperoni, ham, and pineapple. His dad said that sounded good. 
he called the pizza place. They don't have any pineapple, Dad told Billy. What do you want instead? Billy wanted sausage instead. His dad ordered sausage instead of pineapple. About 30 minutes later, there was a knock on the door. It was the pizza man. Here's your pizza, he told Billy's dad. That'll be $16. Dad paid the pizza man. He also gave him a tip. Dad took the pizza to the living room. A baseball game was on TV. Billy and his dad started to eat the pizza in the living room. I hope the Yankees lose, Billy told his dad. I hope the Yankees lose too, his dad said. Different workers wear different clothes to work. A lifeguard wears a swimsuit. Many workers have uniforms. Workers at Burger Hut wear black shirts. The managers wear black shirts too. The managers also wear ties. Mechanics and painters wear coveralls. The coveralls protect their clothes. The coveralls protect their clothes from oil and paint. Pilots wear blue or black uniforms. Sometimes they wear white shirts. Nurses wear white uniforms. Doctors wear white jackets. Bus drivers and soldiers wear uniforms. Policemen and firemen wear blue uniforms. Prisoners wear orange uniforms. Orange is a bright color. Orange uniforms are easy to see. Prisoners can't hide in their orange uniforms. Chefs wear white jackets and tall white hats. Cowboys wear jeans and boots. Clowns wear big plastic noses and big shoes. Fashion models wear beautiful clothes. Most workers don't wear uniforms. Teachers and truck drivers wear regular clothes. Most workers wear regular clothes. I love my dad. He was a good man. He taught me to work hard. He taught me to keep trying. He taught me to do things right or don't do them at all. He grew up on the streets of New York City. His parents didn't speak English. He had three brothers and one sister. His brothers ended up in jail. His sister died in a car crash. My dad married my mom when they were both 19. My dad joined the army. He jumped out of airplanes then he became a military policeman. He did this for 20 years. He liked his job. He was a hard worker. He went to college while he was in the army. He got two college degrees. One degree is good. Two college degrees is very good. He retired from the army and became a teacher. He taught high school kids. He taught high school kids for 20 years. 
He had a lot of patience. Teachers need a lot of patience. Then my dad retired. He traveled around the world with my mom. They both died in a plane crash. That was bad, but they died together. That was good. She heard the mailman. The mailman made noise when he delivered mail. She walked downstairs. She said hello to the mailman. He said hello to her. He said it was a beautiful day. She agreed. The mailman went to the next apartment building. She opened her mailbox. There was a bill from her insurance company. She would send the company a check immediately. There was also junk mail in her mailbox. The junk mail was from her phone company. The phone company sent her junk mail every month, but she wasn't interested. She never opened junk mail. It went straight into the trash. There was also a postcard in the mailbox. It was from her dentist. She saw her dentist twice a year. It was time for her visit. She went back upstairs. She called her dentist. She made an appointment. Laura is my best friend. We are in the third grade. We do everything together. We walk to school together. We eat lunch together at school. Laura's mother gives her tuna sandwiches for lunch. My mother gives me peanut butter sandwiches for lunch. We share our sandwiches with each other. Sometimes Laura gets apples for lunch. Sometimes I get peaches. We share our fruit with each other. We help each other with our homework. She helps me with history. I help her with arithmetic. We spend the weekends together. Her parents invite me to their house, or my parents invite her to our house. We sleep over. I spend the night at her house, or she spends the night at my house. We talk about everything. We talk about our brothers. They are so silly. We talk about our teachers and our parents. We love them. We talk about the boys in class. We don't like them. They are so silly. Why in the world do some girls like boys? Boys never grow up. We will never like boys. I love my newspaper. It tells me the news every day. The newspaper has page after page of news. I also get the news from the radio and the TV. I also get the news from my friends but I like the newspaper the best. I can read the newspaper any time I want. I can read any story I want. I can stop reading any story I want when I want. My newspaper has many sections. The first section is national news. The next section is state and city news. The next section is business news. The next section is sports. The last section is entertainment. 
That's a lot of news every day. I have only one problem with my newspaper. Most of the news is sad news or bad news. Why? There is good news too. People like good news. People like to read and hear good news. I think my newspaper needs a section for good news. I think good news should be the first section of my newspaper. The loaf of bread is next to the jar of peanut butter. The bag of peanuts is next to the carton of milk. The plate of cookies is next to the bowl of chicken soup. The cup of coffee is next to the glass of juice. The fork is next to the spoon. The knife is next to the salt shaker. The salt shaker is next to the pepper shaker. The milk is in the carton. The water is in the glass. The coffee is in the cup. The soup is in the bowl. The milk is in the refrigerator. The soda is in the refrigerator. The ice cream is in the freezer. The lamp is on the table. The toaster is on the kitchen counter. The toaster is plugged in. The microwave is on the kitchen counter. But the microwave isn't plugged in. Someone unplugged the microwave. Who unplugged the microwave? I will plug it in. I want to eat some popcorn. I want some hot popcorn. I will plug in the microwave. I will eat hot popcorn and drink a cold soda. She called the landlord. Her apartment was full of roaches. Roaches were everywhere. They were under the kitchen sink. They were in the kitchen cabinets. They were on the kitchen counters. They were in the oven. They were on the stove. She turned on the gas. The roaches ran from the hot flames. She sprayed her apartment every month. She used two cans of bug spray a month. First, she opened all the windows. Then she sprayed everywhere. The apartment stunk of roach spray. The stink gave her a headache. Finally, the landlord came. He looked around the apartment. He saw roaches everywhere. Adult roaches and baby roaches. Teenage roaches. He said, boy, you weren't kidding. You sure have a lot of roaches. She said, I know that. What are you going to do about it? He said, don't worry. I'm calling the bug man. He will put a big tent over the whole building. Then he will spray the whole building. He will spray the whole building with roach spray. The tent will cover the building for a month. Then all the roaches will be dead. Your problem will be solved. Oh, that's great, she said. But where will I live for a month? The landlord said, that's a big problem. I don't know where you will live. 
Do you have any friends? Maybe you can live with them. He turned on the TV. He watched the six o'clock news. The news was about an airplane. The airplane had two engines. A big bird flew into each engine. The engine stopped working. The pilot landed the plane in a river. All the passengers climbed out onto the wings. Boats pulled up next to the plane. The plane was floating in the river. The people on the boats rescued all the passengers and crew. Everyone on the plane survived. No one died. No one was injured. Everyone said it was a miracle. The pilot was a national hero. Everyone in America knew his name. The passengers said he was a hero. The press said he was a hero. The president of the United States said he was a hero. His wife said he was a hero. They had a parade for the pilot in his hometown. The governor made a speech. The mayor made a speech. The pilot's teacher when he was in third grade made a speech. The pilot made a speech. It was a short speech. He was an animal lover. He didn't eat meat. He didn't eat fish. He didn't eat chicken. He only ate vegetables and fruit because he loved animals. The pilot said he felt sorry for the two dead birds. Roses are red, violets are blue. I'm in a house, the tiger's in a zoo. Roses are red, oceans are blue. I have a cold, you have the flu. Roses are red, pencils are blue. I lost my hat, you lost your shoe. Roses are red, the sky is blue. Pigs say oink, cows say moo. Roses are red, whales are blue. I don't have to pee, I don't have to poo. Roses are red, birds are blue. You love me, and I love you. Roses are red, ink is blue. When people sneeze, they say a chew. Roses are red, mouthwash is blue. I like soup, and you like stew. Roses are red, paint is blue. Dogs like to bite, dogs like to chew. Roses are red, stamps are blue. You pound a nail, you turn a screw. Roses are red, sweaters are blue. I love my daddy and my mama too. Roses are red, crayons are blue. When people get married, they say I do. Roses are red, paper is blue. My car is old, your car is new. Violets are blue, roses are red. I sleep on the couch, 
You sleep in your bed. Violets are blue. Apples are red. One twin is Ted, and the other is Fred. Violets are blue. Turtles are green. My grandma is nice. My uncle is mean. Violets are blue. Baseballs are white. Some people are rude, but most are polite. Violets are blue. Toilets are white. Babies have no teeth, but they still try to bite. Violets are blue. The sun is yellow. Girls want to marry a rich, handsome fellow. Violets are blue. Flowers are pink. A car will crash, and a boat will sink. Violets are blue. Tires are black. You have a mansion. I have a shack. Violets are blue. Grass is green. My room is dirty. Your room is clean. Violets are blue. Eggs are white. I say good morning. You say good night. Violets are blue. Stop signs are red. Shoes are on my feet. A cap is on my head. Violets are blue. Hair is gray. I like to work. You like to play. Violets are blue. Pajamas are pink. What do I know? What do you think? Violets are blue. Flowers are yellow. I say goodbye. You say hello. How high is up? Why is the sky blue? Do fish sleep? Where do babies come from? How do ships float? How do planes stay in the air? Why are you laughing? Why are you crying? Are we there yet? What do I care? Who's there? Who's calling? Who's at the door? Where are you from? Where do you live? Where is my pencil? Who won? Who lost? Who's playing? Do I know you? Have we met? What was your name again? Do you have the time? What time is it? What day is it? What is the date? How are you? How do you do? What do you do? How old are you? How tall are you? How much do you weigh? Are you married? Do you have any children? Do you love me? Can you hear me? Can you see me? What's that smell? What are you cooking? Can I borrow your pencil? Can I borrow five dollars? What are you watching? What's on TV? Look both ways before you cross the street. Wear clean underwear. Do your homework. Be polite. Obey your parents. Go to school. Stay in school. Wash your hands. Wipe your nose. Wipe your feet. Wash your face. Brush your teeth. Take the dog for a walk. Clean the cat's 
litter box. Be a good boy. Be a good girl. Turn down the TV. Turn off the TV. Stand up straight. Chew with your mouth closed. Close the door. Do as I say, not as I do. Mind your manners. Be nice to your brother. Be nice to your sister. Watch your brother. Play with your sister. Be patient. Study. Listen to your teachers. Keep trying. Sit down on the bus. Buckle your seatbelt. Try this. Try these. Change your clothes. Put on a clean shirt. Get dressed. Get into your pajamas. Go to your room. Clean up your room. Make your bed. Go to bed. Kiss your mommy good night. Say thank you. Say please. Say you're welcome. Say your prayers. Don't wipe your nose on your sleeve. Don't pick your nose. Don't interrupt me. Don't talk with food in your mouth. Don't go swimming right after eating. Don't forget to feed the dog. Don't forget to take the dog for a walk. Don't hit your sister. Don't make your brother cry. Don't chew with your mouth open. Don't make fun of other people. Don't slam the door. Don't play in the street. Don't be late. Don't bother me now. Don't shout. Don't yell. Don't scream. Don't litter. Don't be rude. Don't drop out of school. Don't talk while you eat. Don't make a mess. Don't talk so loud. Don't fight with your brother. Don't worry. Don't give up. Don't eat that. Don't talk to strangers. Don't play with matches. Don't play with fire. He was a bad boy. He didn't obey his mother. Once he slapped his mother. Another time he twisted her arm. Another time he pushed her down. She fell to the floor. He was a bad boy. He dropped out of school. He played games on the computer. He played games day and night. He cheered loudly when he won a game. He cursed loudly when he lost a game. He didn't care if his mom was trying to sleep. She asked him to please be quiet. He told her to drop dead. But he loved her cooking. She cooked delicious meals. Mom, I'm hungry, he said every day. She spent hours every week cooking for him. He never said thank you. He never said the meals were delicious. He finished his meals and went back to his computer. His mom washed the dishes by hand. She took out the garbage. She did all the shopping. She worked while he played. 
One day she decided enough was enough. When he was 19 years old, she left her son. She got into her car and drove away. He poured some soda into a glass. The bubbles rose in the glass. He looked at the bubbles. He listened to the bubbles. He dropped a couple of ice cubes into the glass. The ice cubes floated to the top. He waited until the ice cubes got a little smaller. He took a sip of the soda. It was nice and cold. He put the glass on the table. He put an ashtray on the table. He took a cigarette out of the Marlboro box. He tapped the cigarette a couple of times. He put the cigarette in his mouth. He tore a match out of the matchbook. He closed the matchbook. He lit the match. He moved the match to the end of the cigarette. He inhaled. Smoke entered his mouth. He inhaled more. Smoke went into his lungs. He took the cigarette out of his mouth. He exhaled. A big cloud of smoke filled the dining room. He watched the smoke disappear. He put the cigarette in his mouth again and inhaled. It felt so good. He felt so relaxed. His wife came out of the bathroom. Open the windows, she yelled. You're stinking up the whole house. I will quit smoking tomorrow. I swear it. I promise. I'm not kidding. I'm serious this time. I just bought my last pack of cigarettes. I'm going to smoke all 20 cigarettes before midnight and then I'm finished. I'm through. I'm done. No more. Not one more cigarette. Not even one. I will be free. I will save $4 a day. More than $1,000 a year. That will be nice. I will have fresh breath. My girlfriend will enjoy kissing me. I will smell good. My clothes will smell good. My lungs will get healthy. My teeth will get whiter. I won't get lung cancer. I won't get mouth cancer. I won't get throat cancer. My cough will go away. My sore throat will go away. I won't think about cigarettes all the time. I will start a new life. My new life will be a healthy life without cigarettes. School starts at 8 in the morning. His mom woke him up at 6.30. He yawned and got out of bed. He got dressed. He ate breakfast. He ate a bowl of cereal for breakfast. His favorite cereal was Cheerios. He also ate a banana. Bananas are yellow outside and white inside. He drank a glass of orange juice. Oranges are orange outside and orange inside. He ate a piece of toast with butter on it. Brown toast, yellow butter. He drank a glass of milk. Then he brushed his teeth. He kissed his mom goodbye. He walked outside to the school bus stop. 
It was two blocks away. He met his friend Bobby. They talked while they waited for the bus. The bus arrived. He said hello to the bus driver. He and Bobby sat together on the bus. They talked about baseball. The bus ride took 20 minutes. They got to school at 7.30. The bus driver said, have fun in school. They always did. People are standing in long lines all over America. The long lines are unemployment lines. Unemployment lines are for people who have no jobs. Millions of Americans have no jobs. They used to have jobs, but they got laid off. They got laid off because of the recession. The recession is in America. The recession is in China. The recession is in Europe. The recession is all over the world. What's a recession? A recession is a time when people have only a little money. They don't buy new things. If they don't buy new things, factories stop making new things. Factories lay off the workers. In a recession, people buy only necessary things like food. They don't buy new TVs, new cars, or new homes. They don't buy new shoes. They take their old shoes to the shoe repair shop. They don't go to expensive restaurants. They go to fast food restaurants. They don't go to the movies. They watch TV. They don't go to Disneyland. They go to city parks. Everyone hopes the recession will end soon. She got dressed. She needed to go out. She needed to buy lipstick. She walked out to her car. The car was in the driveway. She got into her car. She backed out of the driveway. She drove south on Lake Avenue. She stopped at all the red lights. She turned left on Colorado Street. She pulled into the drugstore parking lot. She walked into the drugstore. She went to the lipstick section. Her favorite color was dark red. Her favorite brand was Bobbi Brown. She found the Bobbi Brown lipsticks. She looked for dark red, but she couldn't find dark red. Instead, she found cherry pink. She liked cherry pink. She put some on her lips. She looked in a mirror. Her lips were so pretty. She took the lipstick to the cashier. She gave the cashier $20. He gave her a little change. He put the lipstick into a small plastic bag. He said, have a nice day. She drove home. She couldn't wait to kiss her husband with her new lipstick. He has a list of things to do. He has to go to the bank. He needs some cash. He needs to get some cash from the ATM at the bank. He has only $10 in his wallet. Then he has to go to the post office. He needs stamps. He has to buy a book of stamps. There are 20 stamps in each book. A book costs $8.40. Then he needs to go to the DMV. 
he needs to get a new driver's license. His old license will expire in a month. He needs to get a new photo too. Finally, he needs to go to Best Buy. His girlfriend wants the DVD of season four of Lost. She loves that TV show. It's about people who are on an island. Their plane crashed onto the island. It is a strange island. It has strange animals and strange people. It has black smoke that chases people and kills them. Everything that happens is a big surprise. It is a crazy TV show. Let's go to the beach, Daddy, Susan suggested. That sounds like a good idea, her daddy replied. It was a hot, sunny day. The ocean was only two blocks away. Susan went into her room. She put on her swimsuit. She grabbed a big beach towel. She put on a hat and grabbed her sunglasses. She put on her flip-flops. I'm ready, Daddy, she said. Do you have any sunscreen? He asked. No, I forgot. Where is it? She asked. He told her it was in the top drawer in the bathroom. She went into the bathroom and opened the drawer. I've got it, she said. They walked outside. The sun was bright. Susan put on her sunglasses. She loved to wear her sunglasses. They made her look like an adult. She gave the beach towel to her dad. She grabbed her dad's hand and they started walking. 10 minutes later, they were at the beach. It was crowded. Dad found a spot. He put the beach towel on the sand. Susan took off her hat and sunglasses. She ran into the water. Dad watched her play in the water. She was having fun. Suddenly, a wave knocked her over. She went underwater. Dad ran into the water. He pulled her up. Daddy, I almost drowned. Susan said. No, you didn't, he said. That wave only knocked you over. Don't worry, I'm watching you. The TV weatherman says a lot of things. He gives us a lot of information. He says it will be hot and sunny. He says it will be cold and rainy. We will get showers. We will get two inches of rain. We will get three inches of snow. The temperature tonight will go down to 50 degrees. The temperature tomorrow will be 73 degrees. The sun will rise at 6.30. The sun will set at 6.15. The beaches will have early morning fog. A winter storm is coming. The mountains will have snow. The waves at the beach will be high. The Santa Ana winds are coming. It will be hot and windy. We must be careful. We must watch for fires. 
The TV weatherman goes on and on. He talks and talks. He tells us everything about the weather. He has pretty pictures and maps. He points at the maps. He has lots of fancy technology. We don't have fancy technology. We don't need fancy technology. If we want to know what the weather is like, we just look out the window. Rex is very sick, Lucy's mom said. Is he going to die? Lucy asked. Yes, I'm afraid so, mom said. I'm going to take him to the vet. Lucy wanted to go along. Okay, but try not to cry, okay? Mom asked. Lucy said she wouldn't cry. Mom carried Rex out to the car. She put him in the back seat. He was a little dog. He was 12 years old. He was the same age as Lucy. They drove to the vet. The vet looked at Rex. He said he could not do anything for Rex. Rex is on his last legs, the vet said. He told mom she could take Rex home and wait for him to die. Or the vet could simply put Rex to sleep. Let's put him to sleep, Lucy said. That way he won't suffer. Mom said that was a good idea. They left Rex with the vet. We can get another dog for you if you want, Mom told Lucy on the way home. Can we get a kitten instead? Lucy asked. I'm moving to New York, she said. Will you come with me or not? She loved New York. She loved the subways. She loved the buses. She could walk or take a taxi anywhere. She didn't have to drive anywhere. No more driving, like in Los Angeles. She hated driving in Los Angeles. New York has tall buildings. It has busy streets and sidewalks. It has Broadway. It has Times Square. It has Central Park. It has Wall Street. It has restaurants on every block. It has delivery people. You can buy anything and they will deliver it in 20 minutes, she said. You will have problems in New York, he said. He told her she would freeze in the winter. She would bake in the summer. New York was too expensive. It was too crowded. It was a target for terrorists. They would blow up the whole city. It was noisy. It was dirty and dangerous. Are you coming or not? She asked again. Of course I'm coming, he answered. Why wouldn't I? It's time to go to bed, Danny's mom said. But I'm not sleepy. Danny complained. He wasn't sleepy because he had taken a nap before dinner. He had slept for almost one hour. Before his nap, he was in the park. He liked to go to the park. The park was full of trees. He loved to climb the trees. His mom told him not to climb the trees. He might fall and hurt himself. He didn't obey his mom. It was fun to climb trees. 
It was fun to climb higher and higher. It was fun to be taller than adults. It was fun to look down on the adults. One time he found a bird's nest. It was empty. He would visit it again in springtime. Maybe baby birds would be in the nest. Danny always went to the park after school. The trees in the park were like a second home to him. His mom said that maybe he was part monkey. He kissed his mom and said good night. Once in bed, he counted trees so that he could go to sleep. The policeman saw the car. The car was speeding. Richard was driving the car. The speed limit was 35 miles per hour. Richard's car was going 50 miles per hour. The policeman turned on his siren and flashing lights. He caught up to Richard, but Richard didn't pull over. Richard was drunk. He was drinking a cold beer. He was listening to loud music. He was having a good time. Finally, he noticed the siren and flashing lights behind him. Richard pulled over. He stopped the car and turned off the engine. He threw the can of beer out the window. The cop walked up to the car. He picked up the can of beer. Is this yours? He asked. No, sir, Richard said. It's cold, the cop said. There's still some beer in this can. I bet your fingerprints are on this can. The cop told Richard to get out of the car. He told him to tilt his head back and close his eyes. He told him to touch his nose with his finger. Richard got dizzy. He lost his balance. He started to fall. The cop grabbed him. He put Richard into the back seat of his police car. He told Richard, you shouldn't drink and drive. I know that, Richard said. Everybody knows that, said the cop, but they still drink and drive. Tomorrow will be the best day of my life, Betty said. Yes, it will be, said her mom. I'm so happy for you. Paul is such a good man. He will make a great husband and father. And he's so nice. Your dad and I both love him. Betty met Paul after she broke her leg. She broke her leg skiing. Paul was the doctor who fixed her leg. He visited her every day in the hospital. Then he visited her at home. He brought her get well cards and gifts. They fell in love with each other. I never thought a broken leg would be a good thing, Betty told her mom. But it was the best thing that ever happened to you. Life is strange sometimes, her mom said. After Betty's leg healed, she and Paul started dating. They went to movies and restaurants. They went to the beach. They even went skiing. They were so happy together. One day, Paul asked Betty to marry him. Can we have lots of kids? She asked. Of course, he said. 
but let me teach them how to ski. They both laughed. Do you have salted peanuts? Joe asked. Yes, we do, said the store manager. They're at the end of aisle four. They're next to the potato chips. You can't miss them. Joe thanked the manager. He pushed his shopping cart down aisle four. He saw some jars of pickles. Pickles would taste good with a ham sandwich. He put a jar in his shopping cart. He continued down the aisle. He saw packages of bread. He needed bread to make a ham sandwich. He put a loaf of bread in his cart. He got to the end of the aisle. He saw the bags of roasted peanuts. The peanuts were in their shells. Unsalted peanuts were in the bags with the blue label. Salted peanuts were in the bags with the red label. All the bags were the same price. He put a bag of salted peanuts in his cart. Salted peanuts are not as healthy as unsalted peanuts. But salted peanuts taste a lot better. He went to aisle five. That was the aisle with sliced ham. He put a package of sliced ham into his cart. He went up front to the cashier. He gave the cashier $20 and got his change. He couldn't wait to get home. He was hungry for peanuts, pickles, and a ham sandwich. When will you teach me how to swim? She asked. I am afraid of drowning. I am afraid of deep water. I am afraid of going on boats. I am afraid of flying in planes over the ocean. I want to learn how to swim. You don't need to learn how to swim, her husband said. All you need to learn is how to float. Floating is so easy. It's especially easy for women because women have more fat than men. Let me give you a quick lesson. To float, lie on your back. Look up at the sky. Spread your arms and legs. Breathe normally. That's it. Yes, that sounds easy, she said, but I want to learn how to swim. Swimming is good exercise. Swimming will help me lose weight. Floating will not help me lose weight. If I float for a day, I won't lose any weight at all. Okay, he said, I will teach you how to swim this weekend. It will take only a couple of hours. By Saturday night, you will be able to swim like a fish. Ed was riding his bicycle. A dog started chasing him. He yelled at the dog. Then he tried to kick the dog. He lost his balance. He fell off his bike. His head hit the curb. A neighbor saw him fall. She dialed 911. An ambulance arrived. It took Ed to the emergency room. But it was too late. The doctors could not save him. Ed died. Ed was the son of the governor of Texas. The governor and his wife were very sad. The governor didn't want other children to die. He didn't want other parents 
to suffer. He didn't want them to lose their children. He talked to the state lawmakers. He asked them to pass a new law to protect children. The lawmakers agreed. They were parents too. They passed a new law to protect children. The governor signed the new law. The new law was a helmet law. Children had to wear a helmet when they rode a bike or a sled or a horse. They had to wear a helmet when they snowboarded or skateboarded. Texas is now a safe state for children, said the governor. Maybe we're safe, said one boy, but we're not happy. Helmets suck. What time does the football game start? John asked. It starts at three o'clock. What time are you coming over here? Mark asked. John said he would be there at two o'clock. Then he said goodbye and hung up the phone. He had to go to the post office to mail a birthday card. His daughter's birthday was next week. The birthday card showed a woman golfer with a big smile on her face. The card said, a birthday is like a hole in one. Sharon was almost 25. Before she graduated from high school, she had received a golf scholarship to college. It was a four-year scholarship. It paid for all her college expenses. She was on the golf team for four years. After college, Sharon became a professional golfer. She traveled all over the country playing golf. Once she won a tournament. She was not the best woman golfer, but she was good. She was in the top 10 every year. She usually made about $100,000 a year. She was also having fun. John was happy about his daughter's success. He was proud of his daughter. That's my girl, he told his friends. Beth was a famous singer and a famous actress. Everyone wanted her autograph. Everyone took pictures of her. She was 26 years old. She had a great body. She was slim and pretty. She was also divorced. She had one child. His name was Charlie. He was six years old. A movie actor loved Beth. William was fat and old but he was rich and smart. He asked Beth out to dinner. She went to dinner with him. They had dinner many times. Then he invited her to his private island. She took Charlie with her. They stayed on the island for almost a year. William asked Beth to marry him. They got married on his island. Then she returned to Hollywood to make a new movie. Nobody in Hollywood recognized her at first. Do I know you? Everyone asked. They didn't recognize Beth because she had gained about 80 pounds. People said she was too fat. They said she wasn't pretty anymore. She said she didn't care. My husband is fat and he likes me fat, she said. If you don't like me fat, 
I don't care. I will go back to my island and eat all I want. I don't need Hollywood. I have a husband and a son who love me. What more could a woman want? It was a warm spring day. It was sunny, but a storm was coming. The sky turned dark gray. Then a black funnel descended from the sky. The black funnel touched the ground. It was a tornado. A tornado is strong. A tornado picks up cars and trucks. They fly through the air like pieces of paper. The tornado siren blasted. It warned everyone in town to take cover. Everyone gathered their kids and pets. They went downstairs into their basements. A tornado can destroy a house, but the basement is safe. Sometimes a tornado hits a town without warning. A year ago, a man was sitting in his bathtub. He was enjoying his bath. He heard a loud sound. He thought a train was crashing into his house. But he did not live near the railroad tracks. It wasn't a train. A tornado struck his house without warning. The tornado destroyed the man's whole house. Suddenly, he was taking his bath outside. The roof and walls of his house were gone. His wife came home. At first, she cried because her house was gone. Then she laughed. Her husband looked so funny sitting in the tub. He couldn't leave the tub because he had no clothes. He didn't want his neighbors to see him without clothes. His wife had a towel in the trunk of her car. She gave him a towel and he climbed out of the tub. They were both happy that he was alive. About 10 customers were in the small restaurant. It was late at night. Jenny and David were sitting at a table in the corner. They both worked for the same supermarket. They liked their jobs. They worked together and they had fun together. They went to church together. They planned to get married and live together. They were saving their money for a house. They wanted to buy a new house in a nice neighborhood, but they needed a down payment. They needed $30,000 for a down payment. They had saved 16,000. They needed 14000 more. Then they would buy their new house. They were eating their soup. Two men walked into the restaurant. They shouted at someone. Then they pulled out guns. They started shooting. David pushed Jenny to the floor. He covered her with his body. The gunmen stopped shooting and walked out of the restaurant. The restaurant was quiet. Someone started to cry. Two people were dead. One was the cashier. The other was the manager. The mountains are beautiful but they can be dangerous. Yesterday, a mountain lion attacked a woman. The woman was walking on a trail with her friend. The trail was in the mountains. Donna was walking in front of Linda. They were walking uphill on the mountain trail. 
the mountain lion jumped out of the bushes. It attacked Donna. Donna screamed. Linda hit the mountain lion with her backpack. The mountain lion grabbed the backpack with its mouth. The mountain lion grabbed the backpack with its mouth. It ran into the bushes with the backpack. Both women sat on the trail. They were crying. Donna's nose and ears were bleeding. About five minutes later, a man walked up. He asked them what happened. He had a cell phone. He dialed 911 but his cell phone did not work in the mountains. He said he would get help. He ran back down the trail. Donna was afraid to stay in the mountains. So was Linda. They got up and slowly walked down the trail. They held hands. They did not say a word. They kept looking around and behind them. They were so afraid. They jumped when they heard a strange sound. Was the mountain lion following them? The man set the woman on fire. She was a dancer in a nightclub. The man came to the nightclub once a month. He asked the woman for her phone number. She said no. I don't even know you, she said. Why would I give you my phone number? He told her that he was in love with her. She told him that he was crazy. How could he be in love with her? He didn't even know her. He didn't know anything about her. He finished his drink and paid for it. He left the nightclub. He sat in his car in the parking lot. She was glad that he left. Later, she went outside to smoke a cigarette. The man got out of his car. She did not see him or hear him. He poured gasoline on her and threw a match on her. She was on fire. She started screaming. She ran into the nightclub. The manager put the fire out with his jacket, but her face and hands were badly burnt. No one would ever ask her for her phone number again. George owned a house near the woods. He had three neighbors. They all had big, beautiful houses. They loved their small neighborhood because it was near the woods. It was not near traffic, noise, or the city. Many birds and other animals lived in the woods. One day, George drove home in a water truck. A water truck holds a lot of water. George thought the water truck would save the houses from fires. The water truck held 2,000 gallons of water. It cost $50,000. That's a lot of money. But if it saves our homes from a fire, it's worth every penny, he told his neighbors. They all agreed with him. One year later, the woods were on fire. George sprayed water on all the houses. They could not catch on fire because they were so wet. George saved all the houses with his water truck. His neighbors said he was brave. They thanked him for saving their homes. They had a big party 